Welcome to Around the World on 8 Plates. In this series, we're going to visit different countries and introduce these countries to you by providing information regarding itinerary. We're also going to teach you how to cook signature dishes from these countries and interview locals from these countries so that you can have a better understanding of what these countries are all about. So join me, your host, Jojo Tang, as we go around the world on 8 Plates. Presented to you by National Taiwan Normal University, Common Core Education Committee, Foreign Language Education Division. Previously on Around the World on 8 Plates, we went to the country of Latvia. Where are we going today? We are going to this mystery country. Which country is it? Let's find out in the Pani Monologue. Okay everyone, it's Pani Monologue time. So I'm going to sing a song and try to guess which country we're going. Ready? <clears throat> Can you feel the love tonight? Can you feel? Doesn't that sound like the name of the country? Where are we going today? Let's find out in three, two, one. If you still cannot figure out where we are going, let us say, Welcome to Kenya! Or, as the locals say, Karibu Kenya! And today we're going to teach you how to cook a very special Kenyan dish. But before cooking, let's find out more about Kenya. Once you land in Nairobi, Kenya, where should you go? What should you do? Let's find out in the country introduction. During the Pani monologue, we sang a song. The song is called, Can you feel the love tonight? This brings us to the movie, The Lion King. In the first scene of the movie, we saw all kinds of animals. Actually, in the country being featured today, Kenya, we can actually see all these animals. Don't believe me? Check this out.
In addition to being the home of the animals in the movie Lion King, Kenya's animals are all good symbols of some terms commonly used in the field of information technology. To determine how this is so, let's take the secretary bird as an example. The secretary bird is just like a keyboard. When we use a keyboard, we hit the keys with our fingers. This motion or movement is just like how the secretary bird kills its prey. The bird uses its feet and stomps the prey to death. Another term in IT is cybersecurity. It is defined as the type of technology that protects information and devices from malicious characters. And we can incorporate the idea of cybersecurity into the lives of the greater kudu. The greater kudu knows how to protect itself from predators like lions, leopards, and hyenas. How does it do that? First, being one of the largest species of antelopes means kudus are able to fight their predators. Second, when a herd is in danger, an adult will start barking woo, 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 to alert the rest of the herd. They will also do this to protect smaller animals, such as smaller antelopes. The smallest antelope in the world is called a dick dick. Finally, their coloring and markings protect them since they can camouflage themselves and hide behind their plants. Another IT term is database, which is defined as an organized collection of information that can be searched, sorted, and updated. Just like a database, any animal in Kenya that lives in big groups can be thought of as a database. For example, flamingos, zebras, and other mammals all live in big groups where searching, sorting, and updating happen all the time. Similarly, a firewall is a network security device that creates a barrier between a trusted and untrustworthy network. Look at the flock of flamingos. Don't they look like a wall that protects themselves from the dangerous surroundings? What about the wildebeest crossing the river? Just like in the computer world, they are moving or migrating from one place to another, and the river is just like their firewall. Motivated by their need for protection and survival, they cross the river. Finally, many animals serve as the employees of a company, serving as cleanup crew in the grasslands of Kenya. Hyenas and vultures eat the flesh of dead animals, making sure that the environment is significantly clean and free of germs and bad smells, and most importantly, suitable for the survival of all animals. This is just like the term troubleshooting, which refers to the technical process of finding and solving problems in a computer system. Indeed, without hyenas, vultures, and other scavengers, the African savanna will be a place where dead bodies of animals scatter exponentially. Having said all of these, we can innovatively claim that Kenya is a place where there are domains of animals. We can definitely acquire knowledge in IT by imagining it as an animal kingdom. What's more, whatever happens in the animal world can have a significant impact on what happens in the human world as well. Without a doubt, this is true in every country and in every city. To learn more about Kenya, please continue reading and you will learn more information about this wonderful country. Today, we're going to make Kenyan masala french fries. And here is a list of ingredients. First, you will need 200 grams of chips or french fries, 3 fourths cup of onion, finely chopped, 1 teaspoon ginger paste, 1 to 2 chilies chopped, 1 tablespoon garlic paste, 1 tablespoon cooking oil, 1 teaspoon paprika, half a teaspoon turmeric, 2 tablespoons ketchup, half a cup of tomato sauce, 1 tablespoon chili sauce, salt to taste, and 2 tablespoons of fresh coriander. So, here is the procedure. Step 1, cook onions in oil. Then add some garlic and cook until it's fragrant. About 1 to 2 minutes. Now add the ginger and the chili peppers and mix. 
Now add the spices, which includes turmeric and paprika powder. After that, add the sauce, which includes ketchup, tomato sauce, and chili sauce. Next, add the baked or cooked or fried french fries or chips and cook and stir. Make sure you also add salt. Finally, serve in a bowl and top with freshly chopped coriander. And there you have it, the recipe for Kenyan Masala French Fries. In case you need it, here is the written recipe for today's dish. Now let's welcome our special guest for today as this person introduces the country being featured even more. Introduce yourself. Okay. Yes, what's your name? Hey, my name is Aman Rajab. Okay. Uh, born in 1997. Uh-huh. Uh, and can you tell us something about Kenya that people yeah. don't know about? Like yeah. Hakuna Matata and, yeah. Hakuna Masata, like, and Masai Mara. Yeah. 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 A beautiful country. Uh-huh. Um, nature. Uh-huh. Yeah. Kenya is... I don't know what to say, but it's uh -huh. a very beautiful country. What is beautiful about it? The nature? Yeah, the nature. Because we have a uh, cultural also. Uh -huh. yeah. Like, uh, we have also mountains. Yeah. yeah. Mountains and animals. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> 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 And how often do you go back to Kenya? Uh, I'll go in December. December? Yeah. Okay, once a year? Yeah. Once a year. All right, thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Where are we going next? Stay tuned as we once again travel the world, learn about the culture of another country, and go around the world on eight plates. <laughs>